our good friend, Pastor Melanie Boone, and her son in the house. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Exodus chapter 20, verse number 17. And when you get there, say, I have it. Have yeah, this series been a blessing to you? Yes. yes. Well, I encourage you to avail yourself to it and get these words that God has been speaking into your heart and listen to it over and over again. We talked Wednesday night about faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And we said hearing means that which has been rumored or that which is being murdered. So, murdered. so you have to hear it over and over again. Amen. Amen. So Exodus 20, 17 says... You shall not covet your neighbor's house. Underline house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. Underline the wife. Or his male servant. Underline servant. Or his ox. Or his donkey. Or anything that belongs to your neighbor. God said you shouldn't be looking at what your neighbor have or another person and longing to the place that it messed up your disposition. There's nothing wrong with admiring things, but when we start longing for stuff, that it begins to mess with our character and mess with our mind. God said that that's wrong. Let me give you Webster's Dictionary of Covet. Covet means to want something that you do not have very much. <laughs> to want something that you do not have very much. Now, that's one thing for me to say, you know, Brother West, I admire your suit. That's a nice suit. But for me to be home meditating on it and pondering, how can I get that suit or how can I get a suit like that? I have crossed the line from admiring something to entering into a place of coveting. Yes. So that's one of the definitions that Webster gives. And then he said it is to wish um, earnestly for something, to wish for something earnestly. And then his last definition was to desire that which belongs to another. Mm -hmm. To desire that which belongs to another. How I many know it's all right to admire mm -hmm. what belongs to another, but when you start desiring, mm -hmm. I wish I had his wife. You know, back in the day, there was a song called I Wish I Had Jesse's Girl. Yep. Anybody remember that? Yeah. And I used to wonder why you can't get your own girl. <laughs> and he would give a description of how Jesse girl looks and how he felt about Jesse girl. And I always wonder how Jesse feel about that. <laughs> so it's one thing to admire what Jesse has, but don't be longing for what Jesse has. Yes. Amen. Yes. So we're going to start the first part of this teaching is the trap of coveting. The trap of coveting. How many know to be in a place where you're constantly coveting and wanting what somebody else has? That's a trap. That's a trick of the enemy. Go to Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse number 8. That's in the Old Testament. Amen. Some of y'all. Look around the Proverbs, Psalm, area, Ecclesiastes. Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes. Amen. Okay, please ask in chapter 4, verse 8. It says, there was a certain man, hope this is not you, without a dependent. He couldn't find nobody on his taxes. <laughs> no pun intended. Having neither a son nor a brother, yet there was no end to all his labor. Indeed, his eyes were not satisfied. With riches... And he never asked, and for whom am I laboring? And depriving myself of pleasure. This too is vanity and is a grievous task. They said, the, 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 the writer Solomon said, this, it was a man that worked all the time. And he didn't have a son. He didn't have a brother. He had nobody to share his wealth with. But he worked all the time. And he never asked himself, for who am I working so hard for that, that I'm not even having pleasure in life anymore? And so one of the traps of the enemy is that it robs a person from enjoying life. It robs a person from enjoying life because you're always pursuing more and pursuing what somebody else has that you don't get to stand back and enjoy what you've accomplished. And this guy was working so hard just to get more stuff. And at the end of the day, the revelation was that he didn't even have pleasure in what he was getting. That's it. 
Because how many know that your happiness or your righteousness does not consist of abundance of things, but what's in your heart and your relationship with God? So it is a trap to be doing all this labor, so much so that you can't even enjoy life. See, there are a lot of people that are sacrificing so much time and energy to pursue a lifestyle that they can't even enjoy. That's right. yeah. And I don't care if you make two figures, three figures, six figures, seven figures. If you're at the point where you can't enjoy the reward of your labor, right. then you're doing too much. Right. And you have to ask yourself, for whom am I doing this for? Right. Because it's a, it's a travesty to be working so hard and yet you don't get to enjoy the fruit of your labor. I told y'all when I, when I was uh, getting ready to graduate Bible college, and I was talking to a professor over at the school, and he was telling me the story about his, his dad and his granddad. His granddad used to build barns, and one day his granddad took his dad, which was a little boy at the time, and, and walked away from the barn and just stood there and just began to look. And he said, what are you, what you doing, Dad? He said, we're done with it. It's time to go. What are you doing? And he said, sometimes, son, you just have to take a break and enjoy and see what you've accomplished. Yes. Because the reward should be the accomplishment right. of a thing yes. and not getting caught up where you right. never feel like you've reached the finish line. Yes. And many people are pursuing a life and they're going to die unfulfilled. Mm -hmm. One of the things that Papa Miles always said is that basically, you know, it doesn't matter how old you are when you die as long as you've been effective in your lifetime. Yes. And, and, and if you're going to rob the grave of its richness, then you have to maximize your potential in the earth. And you can't do that when you're always pursuing something and never get settled. I, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but that's the thing. Always, like a dog chasing his tail, you're never going to catch it. And some people feel like if I give my life to this thing, then I'll eventually be happy. Let me be the first one to tell you, you won't. I, I've, I've known people making five million dollars a year. I mentor millionaires, and and one of the things that they told me is I was sitting in the house trying to figure out how I can blow my brains out. How can I kill myself? Because even though I had all this money and all this That's stuff, right. I was no happy. There wasn't any peace That's in my life until I got a relationship with the That's Lord it. Jesus Christ, and then the peace came. That's it. Because the stuff didn't matter then, and the stuff still doesn't matter because it's not the center of their focus. But you can't feel the void that is in you that can only be filled by God with stuff. Let, let, me, let me say this. Don't get it twisted. I got to move on. You can't fulfill the void with stuff that was provided by God and think that it's going to replace God. Many times things that God will provide and he will allow the blessings to enter into our life and we try to take that and push it into the hole in our soul and you can't do that. That's still only, um, that's a place that, that resides there for God. God is the only person that can feel that void. So you can't even take the blessings of God and try to be fulfilled because God has left that space for himself to step into. So the trap of coveting is that it robs a person from enjoying life. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Let's go to my second part on this, the trap of coveting. Habakkuk 2 and 5. Habakkuk, Habakkuk, however you want to call it. Any hand say Habakkuk. Whatever you want to say, I call it Habakkuk. <laughs> Chapter 2, verse 5. I'm going to keep reading. You get the CD, get the DVD. It says, furthermore, wine betrays the haughty man. The, the man that is in high position or in, in, in leadership, it says that wine betrays the haughty man mm -hmm. so that he does not stay at home. Mm -hmm. The man that is betrayed does not stay at home. Why doesn't he stay at home? Listen, he enlarges his appetite like hell. Mm -hmm. Sheol in the NSB, but King James say hell. Mm -hmm. And he is like death, never satisfied. He enlarges himself like hell, and like death, he's never satisfied. Death can never get enough souls. He also gathers to himself all the nations and collects to himself all the people. So the trap of coveting is that the wicked gets is still empty. He was getting, this was a, 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 a picture of a king. He was still getting stuff, but he was still empty. He was like hell. He was, he was like death. He was never satisfied, and he was never full. 
So he thought that in his getting much stuff, he was eventually going to come to a place of fullness. And notice it says he was never home. Because in order to try to cover up the void that is in your life, many people stay on the run. Some people are fugitives from their own life. Okay, what are you saying? They're on the run from facing the reality of what's going on in their life and who they are. And so the person that is always trying to pursue stuff to fill the void is a fugitive running from the law of himself. Are y'all with me? Are you breathing? And so he's never satisfied. He is never full. He is always pursuing more and thinking that if I can put more money in my pocket, I'm going to be happy. If I can put more cars in the driveway, I'm going to be happy. If I can get the biggest house in the family, I'm going to be happy. If I can dress nicer than anybody else, I'm going to be happy. If I have all the latest gadgets, I'm going to be happy. And he's never happy. Because he's a fugitive. He can't even stay at home because home will force you to confront some stuff. Yes. 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 Home will cause you to look at yourself in the mirror and say, what is really going on yes. on the inside? I know I look good out here. Yes. I know I'm driving nice and I look like I got it yes. together. But there's a hole in my soul. Yes. And what is really going on? What am I running from? 